We're with Jomel Warkin, one of the heroes back from Bangladesh. I'm Philip Hackett, and you're watching Anything Cricket. Let's talk. Reinhold and I recently had a lovely conversation with Jamal Warkin, one of the heroes of the triumphant tour of Bangladesh by the West Indies Test team. We do apologize, however, for the absence of video for much of this interview. That's due to some internet issues beyond our control. Nevertheless, we're sure you'll enjoy listening to Jamal Warkin and sharing your comments with us. Whatever the challenge that you face, you'll need effective insurance solutions. Look no further than IGS Insurance Brokers. We specialize in commercial, auto insurance, life, individual and group health, as well as pension packages. At IGS Insurance Brokers, honesty and integrity are paramount. We are your general insurance brokers for life. We deliver packages tailored specifically for you. Give us a call at 429-8810. You may be locked down, but we've not locked you out. Call us at 242-7642. IGS Insurance Brokers, you can stay safe with us. Well, the champions are back, Wayne Holder, and uh, we've got the privilege of the company of one of these uh, heroes, in the person of Jamal Warkin. Welcome back, Jamal Warkin, and well done. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. So you just returned from the tour of Bangladesh. We would have followed all that happened on our television sets. We would have lost quite a bit of sleep in doing so. But generally speaking, how was the trip for you? Uh, um, it was extremely good knowing that we won the series for me as a player and as an individual um also just being in a bubble made me feel safe as well you know with corona going around you have a high chance of catching it but being in the bubble in bangladesh it was a help me to feel safe and just relax and play cricket and not worry about anything else well Vainola is here with us yes first of all hi worry and uh... Congratulations to Hi. you and the boys. Um, Philip mentioned the word hero, and heroes you all are in the eyes of all West Indian, I, I suspect cricket fans and, 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 and those who are not necessarily cricket fans. So very well done to you all. My, my, my first uh, point though of uh, inquiry is that magic moment you were the man responsible for getting the last wicket, for bowling the ball. Um, of course, we know that um, Raheem Cornwall is the man that took the catch at the other end. But ex ex describe to us the, the, the feeling at that moment when you realized that Cornwall had taken that catch, the West Indies had won. Well, I, I will go back even before that ball, uh, before that over, over before. A couple hours before, I, t I tell myself, well, we have this game won. You know, we can win this game and there's no pressure. But then it began to, it, it started to get closer, sorry. And the over before, um, I think Mahidi hit a couple of boundaries and they wanted 17 from way over now before he took the ball. I remember walking up to Craig and I said, Craig, I'm going to win it this game. I mean, this over, sorry. He's like, all right, backing you. I said, don't worry. We can win it this over. And I took the ball. 
and I bowled the first one. He played it down with the second ball. He edged it to Cornwall. He took a brilliant catch. And from there, from there the feeling was just words can't explain how, how it felt. Know that we won the game, I won the series, and bowling magic, magic ball, they help us mm-hmm. do that. It was a special feeling right there. You guys started to celebrate very early. Um, obviously, watching it on our television sets, our, our view would not have been as good as yours. And I was concerned <laughs> is Cornwall actually going to come up with this ball in his hand, or is this going to be a, a disappointing moment? You guys seem convinced from the beginning that the cash should be getting. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, being out there and seeing it live, you knew that he took the catch. You knew that he took the catch, and we started celebrating confidently because the those buckets of hers, everything was clean. So being out know, there was just knowing that the catch was was uh, taken, and we had all to celebrate and enjoy that moment. Again, uh, watching it on television, as Philip mentioned, might not be as clear as, as one would have wanted. But exactly how difficult to catch uh, was it? What was the degree of difficulty uh, for that catch? From, from my perspective, I saw him go low. I saw him go to his right. But I couldn't tell exactly how high above the ground the ball actually was. I can tell you something that we may not factor in as well. Yeah, maybe low. It may be to his right. He had to come from high to low. But the pressure alone of taking that catch was mm-hmm. the most important thing. To say. That's why it was so hard. That's why it was so crucial. That's why it was such an important catch and a brilliant catch at the same time. But if we're going to the technical part of it now, coming from high to dive to your right like that, it was a brilliant catch. But for me, under pressure and taking a catch, mm-hmm. that was the most important thing. And keeping your composure to help Westerns win the series was brilliant. So well done to Jim. What made you, sorry, what made you so confident, though, that you could tell the captain that you're going you're gonna to take it this over that he's going to finish it? Where, where did that confidence come he, from? He, he doesn't know you, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, Will, Will he don't, don't know me well, Philip. Um, most type of moments because I did and that moment I felt confident I'm going to do it because I wanted to do it. It's hard to say that you're going to do it but when you want to do something it comes out most if you believe that you're going to do 50, 60% chance, 30%. When you buy yourself 100% that you're going to do something, 90% of the time you do achieve it and in that moment I bought myself to be the hero. I bought myself to win the game for West Indies and just a moment I want to cherish, and I wanted that moment so I could say, you know what, I helped Westerns win a series in that vital, vital, vital moment. I think part of the, the, the thing too was the fact that up until that point in time, or I should say up until the final day, um, you are probably not put in your best bowling performance. Uh, even in the first test, uh, there are observers who appreciate the fact that you were able to pick up some wickets, but those of us who have seen Jamel working over the years, I don't think you were convinced that you were really on top of your game until that final day. Do you think that's a fair comment? I agree with you. Um, three million percent, as, especially in the first innings of the second test. I was not on. I was not consistent. I wasn't putting the ball in the areas I wanted to. So saying what you said, I agree with you 100%. But as I say, those three wickets in, those, in that second innings, it was much needed, and I had to step up in the second is for sure because Bangladesh got off to a good start. I know that the team really, really needed me. I had to put aside what happened in the first innings and come good in the second is for the team and help us to win the series. In the first game, he said I got more wickets in that game because I had four wickets very early, and I could easily finish with what, seven wickets in that game, um, even six. You talk about the conditions, you know, there, there was this expectation that the pitches in Bangladesh were going to deteriorate and crumble and that the spinners will rule uh, over uh, the, the, the series. The Bangladeshis went as far as to name four spinners in, in their lineup for the first test. Uh, how 
did you find the the the, the conditions lived up to, to any expectations that that you might have had before the start of the season? Well, if I'm being completely honest, um, I expected the wickets to be a lot worse. I didn't expect them to be so bad and friendly. From the last expression was there in 2018, the wickets would be deteriorating from day one, but that was not the case. I don't know if it was the case it's that they honestly made the, um, the West team. This, this, term, this time around, I said that they don't need to prepare um, spinning track completely. They could beat us without preparing those type of wickets. But for me, the wicket was very good for batting at first. Like the first couple of days, it got a little harder as the, obviously in any test game, it got, it got harder as the days go, went along. But for me, the condition was not as bad as we expected it to be. It was even better than we expected it to be, to be quite honest, because we expected ragging wickets from day one, mm-hmm. ball keeping low, ball shooting. That didn't happen at all. But Kyle scored double 100 in, uh, in first test on the last day. Mm-hmm. He saw um, he just scored 100 as well. And Bono, you saw guys got in close to hundreds. Um, yeah, so therefore, even the second test, once again, Bonner, the silver, all guys got in the 80s. So runs was cool on these tracks. So the conditions really was in favor of the batsmen. Also, yeah, they got Taiju doing well as well. But saying that, you saw Shannon got good bounce on the wicket. Shannon ran in, caused the batsmen to be uncomfortable. So there was... There was there was a mixture of everything for everyone in those wickets, to be quite honest. Um, could get something from, for the seamers, could get something for the batsmen, and could get something for the spinners. So for me, it was a good all-round wicket to play cricket on. You know, you um, are, are familiar with uh, Kyle Mears as, as anybody else. Um, would have seen him play quite a lot of cricket. What was it like, though, sitting and watching that in? <laughs> I'm only an F boy made us. Um, me and Kyle did a gym together in Coveley. And I remember we were squatting some weights. And during our break, we was talking about the series. And he was like, I can score a double hundred in Bangladesh. Mm-hmm. And we can go down there and win this series and do well. And we were just talking about what we want to achieve and goals. And to sit down in the dugout, the dressing room, and watch him actually do it, 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 it was pleasing. I was... It, it, like, it, was, it was a special moment for me. And it just know that this was something that he wanted to achieve. And something that not just wanted to achieve, but to help Westerners win that test was even more magical for me. So it was from playing youth cricket together, from training together, right through now and practicing together to come now and achieve the goals that you set out. It was very, very pleasing for me. And I know for him, it was something special. Once again, a, a lot has been made, well, was made before the start of the series about the nature, the, 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 the strength of the West Indies team. That, that word, uh, that term, second string, came up quite a lot. I noticed that your captain, uh, Kyle, and a number of the other players defended that position by stating emphatically that you were not a um, uh, second string team. You were the West Indies team uh, on tour of Bangladesh. But... Uh, how, what was the inspiration? What, what, what inspired you? And, uh, and if you can speak um, by extension of the rest of the team, what would have been the, the, the main inspiration? Was it the fact that you wanted to prove to the world and to the Cindy's fans that you were not a second string team? Um, it was two factors. One, I think the main factor was that we was beaten extremely bad in Bangladesh the last time we came here in 2018. Came there in 2018. All the both games finished in three days. So I think we had a lot, a lot to prove to the to ourselves as a team, especially the guys that went there the last night. So that was one motivation. And two, no one gave us a chance. So we had nothing to lose. And a man who has nothing to lose is a dangerous man. Mm-hmm. You have nothing to play. So, therefore, you could go and play freely. So, there was only no pressure at all because no one backed us. No one expected anything from us. So, we went out there and played with freedom and belief in ourselves. 
And that's the most last, important thing because we definitely feel that we're a good site. Your last outing for the West Indies would have been on the trip to India when West Indies played the Wanna Test against Afghanistan. And it has been a, a, a situation where you have had to perform away from the Caribbean. But um, the, the, the use of, uh, the, the, because of the evidence of this series, with the outstanding performances of yourself and Raheem Cornwall, um, do you think that that has gone anywhere towards um, eliminating the, the myth that uh, West Indies really um, have, are weaker um, for, for, for when it comes to using spin bowlers uh, in conditions that may not necessarily be deemed spin friendly. Do you think that this performance has gone anywhere uh, towards enhancing your chances, for instance, of playing a game in the West Indies? Well, <laughs> that's a very, very, very good question. Extremely good question. <sighs> um, how to put it? Well, for me, it has been a tough journey playing for West Indies. As you said, having played a game in the Caribbean, have been in, have been out, have been in, have been out. I would love to say that it, sh it will help to change your point of view of spinners being used in the Caribbean. But if I'm being honest, I, I can't say so confidently. I can't even say confidently if I may be in the squad in the Caribbean. I've been in the squad in the Caribbean once in my, in my entire career. So... It, it, it's a tricky um, scenario, very, very tricky. I hope going forward they see that we could help Westerns move forward and perform and help Westerns win games. And like, I know we stuck on tradition with Seamus being from the early 1980s to the 90s coming right through. But the Spinners can also contribute as well. You know what I mean? We can, we can help Westerns go forward. We could win games to Westerns. We could play a role in the Caribbean as well. Even if it means being a hold and being tight and wait till the test match to get to day four and day five, I come into the game now, and that doesn't really have an impact. We gotta look at the bigger picture. How difficult is it though when you are not assured of a player, uh, even when you perform? How difficult is it to come into a side to be in and out and then come in and immediately having to create an impact? It's very hard. Psychologically, it's very, very, very hard because you're never relaxed. You're, you're never sure. You're never secure. So, therefore, like, you're playing against your mind. You're playing against your, your spot. You're playing against security. So, you can never relax and play cricket. And that's what I've been faced with since I've stopped playing with West Indies. And as you know, Phil, as a man, I love to dominate at every level I play at, whether it be for youth cricket, club cricket, for us class cricket, no, I'm interna at international. I, I believe in stats. I love stats. And I got goals. I got things I want to achieve and stuff. But playing for West Indies so far have been a very, very hard journey so far. I, so I just hope from here now this is the changing point in my career. And it could, it could help me to relax and play freely and be what was the word I'm looking for? In a good in a good space when I'm bowling or when I'm out on the field. I'm not worrying about if I'm gonna get dropped for the next series, if I'm gonna play the next series, or if I'm gonna lose what my contract next. It's it just it doesn't just take a bit of relax, enjoy playing for West Indies and tre treasure the moment when I whenever I walk out on that field for West Indies and stuff. So often we've heard about fast bowlers operating in partnership. Um, we've heard about spinners too, even if not to the same degree. What is the effect of bowling alongside Raheem Cornwall? And I say that again to backdrop of the fact that you probably haven't had the opportunity to do that a lot. And also, uh, the presence of Raheem Cornwall in the team is, is one that always causes much debate around the region um, for all the wrong reasons. Um. I can tell you something that this may seem strange to you or to a lot of people in the region. Um, the first time I, I played with Rakim, it was 20, 
17 a team series against um England Lions, if if I'm correct with the dates. But I know it's against England Lions. Um I remember Rakeem, Rakeem telling me, well, Rakeem telling me, sorry, that now that we're playing here together, we could actually win this series because before playing eight teams, he never had a partner that would keep it tight or help build pressure and stuff. I said, you know what? You're right. I said, with you boiling from one end and I'm, I boiling from one end, that's a good combination. And from since then, once we play together, we always win a series. So from the eight team, we play together, we won that series. We went to um, Afghanistan. We won that series. We played a couple of practice games, present 11 games for um, West Indies as well. We did it well together as well, together. So the combination seemed to be working very, very well. But once again, we see that you can have four and five seamers there always set in stone. But when it comes to spinners, no, it's either Rakim or me. Rakim or Jamal. Rakim or Jamal. So... You can never build our relationship. You can never groom two spinners and say, you know what? This is your partnership to be working together. This is how we're going to move forward. You're going to take Western Scrape forward as the two spinners and stuff. And as always, I, I, I don't look at Rakim. So it's, I, I believe he has great ability. He's like fighting spinner. He, fingers are very strong. He can spin the ball, get good bounce. So when you have... Uh, one person as a, as attacking spinner. Me, I see myself as a more defensive spinner. Um, just being tidy, being accurate, subtle variation, building pressure. That's how I get my wickets. So I think the combination is very, 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 very good. But as you said, um, we more see the seam as our strength. So therefore, it's either Rakim or Jamel. So that's why for this series here now, I see myself as well, he probably got the most sick. He did get the most tickets in the series. So, I may be on the back burner again. But tell me something, though. You hinted there just now. You said you don't see his sign. Um, without bringing any secrets out of school that you may not want to, what is your take on how cricketers around the region, not only in the, in the West Indies 11, but around the region generally, and, and his teammates, how would they really respond to this size issue? Uh, do they feel less confident uh, having him in the field? Uh, What's your take on it? Um, I think some people may want to use it as an excuse when they feel the, like the city fitness test or when they then meet the fitness standards and stuff. That's when they worry about Rakeem says. But other than that, he's a very good catcher at slip. Um, obviously, he got the pros. He got his pros and his cons. But any day, we know. You work, you work with the positives. So even though he's a good catch at slip, you put him at slip, you take his take the catches, look at the catch that he took to win the game. The, you know what I mean? So it's just about working with your strengths. In life, is working with your strengths and working with your weakness, weakness as well. So you're not going to take Rakeem and put him at fine leg or long off to do what? No. You know his strength is catching that slip. You leave him at slip and it will benefit the team because you know he'll take the catches. In the end, Jamal, what are your thoughts on the philosophy horses for courses? Um, in life, it, it makes sense. Um, so therefore, if you know that, let's say, for example, um, how to put it? Let's say you know a batsman could play spin extra good. You take him to play. The, you take him to the subcontinent. If you know the batsman that's going to struggle against bumps to the kit, so it's ball that swinging. You think twice about taking him as well, so I agree with that um, statement. But also, you can look at the flip side and say, well, a man do not suit a certain condition, he can't prove you wrong as well. So therefore, as I always say, life, also, sorry, as I always say about life, there's the, there's the pros and the cons, so something you can never win. A man could come and prove you wrong as well, and and go against the odds. So it's an iffy, iffy, iffy topic. Yeah, you, 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 you have the guys like, like the Nathan Lyons and the Mitchell Sattners and these guys are guys uh, are, are spin bowlers who never have or hardly ever have uh, that, that, that problem that you talk of, of having to compete uh, for, for, for a play uh, depending on our conditions. Do you in any way feel um, 
for lack of a better word, envious of these guys. The likes of Nathan Lyon and Mitchell Sartner, Ravi Ashwin, those fellas. I envy those guys because they have gotten the opportunity to play consistently and play any condition. So yes, I envy those guys because in life, life is about opportunities and being able to prove yourself. Until you prove yourself, you will never know. And I think so far, well, for me, per, I can't speak for other people. For me, I haven't gotten a fair chance of really proving myself in national cricket. I've played 10 games in six years since I made my debut in 2015. So there's no stability. There's no consistency in playing international cricket. There's no flowing learning in international cricket. There's no time for me to groove my craft in national cricket. So yes, I do envy them. I'm jealous, actually. <laughs> so, I mean, it makes me upset. <laughs> sorry, for la- sorry for laughing, but I don't think I, I think I take your seriousness and I don't think that you may necessarily take it to be a laughing matter. I want to change that slightly here though. But before before you change, yeah, no, before you change, really... Robin, um I, I just want to throw mm-hmm. something there about uh, the Craig Brackett factor. Um you, you would have been at school with Craig, I believe, at some point. Yes, please. Did that familiarity in any way um assist in terms of the relationship? in Bangladesh because outside looking in, it seemed as though Craig was the inspirational captain who, who led his troops and give them confidence by saying, this is not a second string team. We're here to play cricket and to do well. Uh, tell us about um, Craig Raffitt, the captain. Um, <laughs> Craig, the captain. Uh, watching Craig grow as a leader has been very impressive from when he first started off captaining Barbies for his class team to where he at now. Uh, I think the maturity and understanding, understanding that he has as a leader has really matured a lot. And the fact that, as you said, he gave each individual the confidence to believe in their ability and to show that he backs them 3 million percent. He always said it, said, said this, I back you 100 percent. I know you can do this for me. I know you can score runs for, for the team. I know you can get records for your team. He gives you that confidence as a skipper. You know what I mean? When he come to you before the game, he said he will assist and make a see you again for wickets. Say no. We want you bowling in the nets. We want you batting in the nets because he's scoring 100. And as you said from before, the interviews that he gave, the way he talked to us in the team meeting, he never made it seem that he missed the guys that didn't come. He always made us feel that he appreciated us for coming and backing him. So we gave him that support that he gave us as well. Right, I, I wanted to, to, to change that slightly, Jonga, because yeah. white ball cricket, the limited overs uh, format of the game, has become a very key com- uh, factor of the professional cricketer um, in, in modern times. You have not figured very prominently uh, in the, the, the white ball game, maybe a little more so in the regional rather, but definitely not in the international game. Uh, what, what are your ambitions as far as the, the white ball formats are concerned? And, and what do you think you have to offer um, to, 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 to those formats? Um, to, to be honest, I, can be, I enjoy white ball. Like 50, 50 over cricket, for sure, I enjoy a lot because I think by just being able to think quick and assess quicker in the scenario that you need to do, I just enjoy that challenge. I enjoy someone coming at me and trying to score quick runs. I think by thinking fast, I like to outfox people. But saying that, um, the last couple of years, playing when 50 over was playing, um, I've been on international duties for West Indies. So they haven't given me an opportunity to uh, play 50 over consistently to get myself into the West Indies team. So I can't blame anyone but the schedule. Um, I guess for franchise cricket um, in CPL, I guess is, I, I, I don't know what to say there. I have put my name in a draft. No one's ever bought, well, one person actually ever, ever gave me a chance in CPL was Marlon Samuel, someone that I did appreciate for that uh, stuff. But since then, I've never gone her looking in CPL. And for Barbados, every time the 50 over competition has come around, I've been overseas playing for West Indies in international cricket. But I do want to play more 50 over for Barbados, 50 over cricket for Barbados. I also do want to make my international career 
our debut in 50 over cricket for West Indies and hopefully play some franchise cricket in CPL this year as well. What do you think of your skills that you, you actually bring to, 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 to those games? Or is it a, a case of having now to adjust um, your, 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 your method and, uh, any, in, in any uh, significant way to, to adapt to, 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 to those other formats? Um, well, first, I ask the first question I ask, the skill I have is being, able to, being accurate and being, being able to think when and where to bowl a certain ball or when to spin the ball, when not to spin the ball, and be able to take wickets as well. That I think that, that would be my skill, being able to take wickets. And, and being able to adapt in 50 over cricket is just about analyzing and assessing when you need to attack, when you need to be defensive. Just like if you're playing test cricket, setting the right field, assessing the batsman. So nothing will change uh, at all in terms of um, playing international cricket. I mean, playing 50 over cricket or white ball cricket. It's just about assessing, analyzing, and being accurate and be able to take, use your wicket taking balls to get wickets. Well, Jamel, we really do appreciate the fact that you have uh, taken the time to, um, you know, share your thoughts on the Bangladesh series with us and to share those lovely memories. Um, all that's left, Jamel, as we thank you again for, for joining us, is to wish you all the best moving forward. You've got the Sri Lankan tour coming up and I'm sure you'll be hoping that you'll be part of that squad. And if so, that you will again be able to do your best for, for the West Indies. Thank you very much. Much appreciated for having me on the show. Thank yeah, you. Great, great to hear from you, Wari. All the best. Same here. Thank you. Have a good, have a good day. And you all be safe. Stay inside. <laughs> Hey, we, we, don't, we don't have much choice unless we want to be put uh, further inside. <laughs> <laughs> that's good, that's good. Okay. okay. All righty. All right, good catch up. All right. Yeah. That's our show. Thanks for watching. We invite you to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Join us again soon for another episode of Everything Cricket. Let's talk.